Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with this week's 3D printed video. I am by no means an expert in 3D printing, but I can take a file, put it onto a 3D printer, get it printed, get the model cleaned up, get it sprayed, get it painted and get it on the tabletop. So I can do all of those steps. A lot of videos and a lot of people out there make this um, concept seem a lot more complicated than it is and a lot more complicated than it needs to be. That's not to say there's, there's nothing valid in what they do. Some people turn 3D printing into their hobby to the nth degree and they do crazy things like, you know, mixing, you know, 80% of this resin with 20% of this resin, which gives you stronger this and more, you know, all that kind of craziness. Um, but for the casual person who just wants to get cool miniatures or cool objects 3D printed um, successfully, like I think the majority of us do, then I think this video is gonna help you. I'm going to skip over the part where I put a file into, you know, lychee and slice it and do that kind of bit. I'm gonna go from the point of the miniature has been successfully 3D printed and it is still on the print bed to the point where it's on the, the uh, workbench ready to be painted up. I'm gonna fill you in on all the steps you need to take from point A to point B, the do's and do nots. The sponsor of today's video is Legend of Keepers. They're the ones that provided the models I used in this video. I will talk more about them later in the video. Before I get into it, I just wanna say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to keep the lights on and the cameras rolling. If you're interested in becoming a patron, then it has never been a better time. And all patrons get access to a private Discord server where you get to talk to me about hobby on a daily basis. And you get an extra video every single week. So that's 52 extra videos a year. Okay guys. That's going to do the printing. Okay, so once you have successfully printed your miniatures, they will be coming on the build plate like this. The first thing you need to do is remove the build plate, but before you do this, always make sure you protect yourself and wear gloves. Resin is not a nice material. You do not want it touching your skin under any circumstances. So what you want to get is some blue gloves, any um, they're basically rubber gloves that have no powder, powder free. You don't want that powder getting into your resin or anything like that. Once you're wearing the adequate protection, your hands are protected. It is now time to remove the build plate. You remove it. I usually turn it from side to side to make sure that any drips fall back into the vat. Don't go on your floor. Don't go on the machine. Don't go anywhere that you want it to go. After that, you can check your prints, make sure they've printed successfully, which these have beautifully. So far, I think I've done about 20 prints from this Kickstarter um, that, uh, and I've had a, I, I haven't had a single fail so far. So quite impressed with that. After that, you're then gonna move over to uh, washing the miniatures. So obviously these things are covered in a layer of uncured resin and you wanna wash them. Now, you do not need a fancy wash and cure station like the one that I have here. These are not um, uh, necessary. I went maybe two years of printing without one. I just used a resealable jar with some of the same stuff inside of methylated spirits and I basically dropped the model in, gave it a rinse around and pulled them out. This does remove um, some of the headaches. It does a better job of cleaning. It also has a built-in cure function. This is what I use inside of that thing. It is methylated spirits. Okay, while that is in the wash station getting cleaned up, let's talk about today's sponsor and a new Kickstarter. Legend of Keepers is a 5e compatible series of four unique reverse dungeon adventures inspired by the Legend of Keepers video game by Goblin Studio. Building on the video game's ingenious theme of a monster-driven company defending its net worth of dungeons from marauding heroes, this campaign fully creates a 5e experience in which players can decide if they would rather play each dungeon as heroes, monsters, or both, even going so far as competing against each other in role-playing teams. The campaign features an incredible array of heroes and monsters, all fully rendered as epic printable minis that can be placed in a 3D printable dungeon. Each dungeon is a unique setting within the Legend of Keepers world, but can easily be relocated to any fantasy setting a DM desires. Legend of Keepers is designed for customization with replayability at its heart. Check out the links below, which will bring you straight to their Kickstarter, which goes live at exactly the same time as this video. Go support them, show some love, and a huge thank you for them for sponsoring today's video. Without further ado, let's get back to the video. So, after the miniatures have been thoroughly washed in the uh, methylated spirits, it's time to carefully take them out. 
just like the resin, I like to turn the plate sideways to uh, basically pour out all the excess methylated spirits. There's a bit of a well in the mechanism, so see I turn this upside down, quite a lot of it comes out. So you want to get that cleaned off, and then it's time to move over to uh, a workstation. I like using these little trays from Ikea. They are, have obviously got edges on them, so no spilt resin, uh, no methylated spirits. That's going to go on your worktop. They also don't soak up methylated spirits or resin, so you can clean these over and over again. Now it's time to remove the miniatures from the build plate. As you can see, I'm having a problem with my plastic spatula, so I move over to the big boy, the metal spatula, and I remove the parts. That just goes to show you how well these things adhere to the build plate, which I would always prefer to have things stick to the build plate more than I want to than have them come off halfway through and have a failed print. After that, it's time to remove these miniatures from their supports. As you can see, I've got quite a lot of pieces printed off now. Some of the pieces will just pop right off. So how easily some parts do remove from these models, they are quite expertly um, supported. But some models are super fragile. One in particular springs to mind, which is this Jester miniature. Uh, he is in all sorts of crazy poses. He's got all sorts of fragile things in his hands and he scares the hell out of him. There's no way I would just grab the supports of this miniature and just pull them away because you would definitely damage them. So what I like to do is I take a, a, a bowl of nearly boiling water these will soften up the supports and the connection of the supports and the model will almost fall off. So as you can see, I, the model was in there for a, know, a couple of seconds. And as you can see, the supports just fall away. Because of his crazy angles, it's still a little bit of annoying. As you can see, I'm going in quite carefully around his hands and some of these are details in the miniature. So I'm gonna follow this process, dipping all of the parts into the more than warm water, if you know what I mean. After that, it's time to go over to, with a scalpel and remove any of the extra supports that kind of be tucked away. So for instance, the supports going from the chest to the brim of his wizard hat. Same with the monk, with that kind of wicker hat that he has. You just want to take your time, go in with a nice knife and clear off all of those extra supports until there are no supports left on the miniature anywhere. Being once again, extra careful. After this, it's simple uh, thing to just get the miniature assembled. So just a touch of super glue and glue it. Now all these miniatures are pretty much fully assembled. All you need to do is glue them to their beautiful scenic bases. It doesn't take long as the resin is a porous material. It grabs super glue really well and gets the model stuck down. So after I've assembled all of the miniatures, it's time to move back over to the wash station, but now I'm putting it in cure mode, which means you remove the vat of liquid, add the turntable, and switch it to cure mode. I'm gonna cure these miniatures for six minutes. What that will do is will basically set the resin the whole way through. So right now they're still a little bit soft from the printing. This is gonna make sure they harden up nicely and are then officially ready to be sprayed. So you can see, switch to cure mode, set it for six minutes, hit on, and then UV light is basically flooded into the compartment and it cures the miniatures. Once again, you do not need this. This is not a, a need thing. In fact, you don't need this whatsoever. If you live in a semi-colorful country, you can just leave them out in the sun for 20 minutes, half an hour, and it will do the same job. This is just a convenience thing if you live somewhere gray and miserable like I do. <laughs> After that, the miniatures are fully cured and they're ready to take paint. So the last thing that I want to do is get them sprayed up. It is my favorite part of getting a model ready. Because as you can see, it's quite hard for you guys, even now on screen, to see the stunning detail in these miniatures but just wait until I get them sprayed, which is what I'm gonna do now. And all of the detail suddenly explodes off the miniature. All I did was spray them black and then spray them with a light gray. From above, almost like a zenithal, and all the detail jumps off the page. Legend of Keepers have actually sponsored me to do two videos for them. I'm going to do another one next week. The one I'm gonna do next week is actually painting one of these fine miniatures perhaps two but i want you guys to help me decide which of the miniatures in front of you you want to see there is four goblin sculpts and three hero sculpts i would like to paint one goblin and one hero so from the first four miniatures i'd love if you guys would put in the comments below which one jumps out at you the most and the same with the heroes this is the ninja goblin it's one of my favorites And for the three heroes, although for some reason I never put a jester as being a hero, I don't know why. Just kind of pure chaos, but 
We have a standard traditional wizard casting a spell up out of his base. Absolutely beautiful. Everybody likes a good wizard. Moving on from the wizard, we're going to have the jester, which I think is the most beautiful sculpt I have taken from the Kickstarter so far. There were so many to choose from. It was so difficult. I chose the jester. It's beautiful. It does scare the hell out of me to paint, though. So if you guys want to torture me, you could pick the jester. I would hate you for it, but also kind of respect you for it. Uh, and I think the model that is actually my favorite from the three heroes is the kind of Shaolin monk style character. Um, I got some uh, really serious kind of big trouble in little Chinatown vibes from him. I think he's amazing. You know, bow staff over his back, nunchucks, underarm, ready to go. His base is actually like the yin and yang symbol. So big fan there. So please put in the comments below which one of these models you would like to see me do in the next video. Okay guys, and there we have it. Seven miniatures plus all of their custom bases. So 14 pieces successfully printed off, cleaned up, assembled, sprayed, and ready for paint. I hope this video has dispelled some of your fears and worries and has given you more confidence to perhaps dip your toe into the world of 3D printing. If not, at least it's dispelled some of those myths. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a like. Subscribe if for some crazy reason you're not already. Take two seconds out of your day and it means the world to me. If you have any questions about this video or you'd like to see any more things about 3D printing, please drop it in the comments below and I will do my very best to get a video out there and help you guys out. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next video.